if you want to solve yeah, any problems. Welcome to the American Cannabis Store Grill. I'm your host, Roberto Alvarez Galloso, serving you the best in Americana country and rock music. And we do we do it with this. God, family, country, and U.S. made. To keep that, to show you that I have American made, this is a t-shirt, and I'm wearing jeans from the All-American Clothing Company, made in Ohio, where I was born. The hat is Abbey London. The cap is made in the United States. Abbey London is also the made in the USA. And Abbey London, we're dedicating this interview to her as well. She is one of the uh, singers who is um, fighting the great battle in this in Washington State, one of the bluest, bluest states of the world, next to New York. <laughs> I have here one of the greatest, one of the greatest rockers and country stars of all time, Guitar Zen. For me, it's a pleasure and an honor having you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. Okay. You really have a really, we've, we've seen all of your web pages and everything, and you have a really great, really, really, really great history. How did you get started? I'm going to take three questions and put it into one. How did you get started? What is the present for you right now? What are you going to do? And what are you doing in the future? And a bonus question of all the one question. You were a Bernie Sanders supporter at one time, and um, now you have uh, seen the light gone the other way. How did you do that? So if you could get all of this in one. Well, let me start, yeah, with the Bernie question, because that is definitely where I think a lot of people could benefit from where I've gone in my journey to now. You know, I've always been politically minded, if you will. I've always mm -hmm. thought about government. I've always thought about the betterment of people. I've always cared about what's going on in the world. So the rhetoric that Bernie was speaking to me at the time, being not as experienced in the world, uh, I was very um, resonating with what Bernie was saying. You know, we got to make them pay their fair share and we got to you know, work on, focus on Main Street and not, you know, all the good stuff. They, they talk a good game and they speak mm -hmm. to people who, who have those values where they say when you're young, if you're not a Democrat when you're young or if you're not a liberal when you're young, you're heartless. And if you're not a conservative when you're old, you're brainless. Um, you know, at the time, yeah, I had a lot of compassion and, you know, I'm Native American too, as part of my heritage. I cared mm -hmm. about Standing Rock. I was there at Standing Rock. I went Oak Flats. I went to all the places that I needed to be at, and I didn't see a whole lot of anybody actually doing anything about that on any, on any side of anything. And when I heard Bernie at the time, it was like, oh, this guy is a guy that cares about regular people, that cares about it. If we could just get people like him in there, then you know we could start making some changes. And I realized in that they're just talking a good game. That when they talk, what they want you what you want to hear and it's all good yeah ideally i agree with what they're saying and ideally it should be that way but in practice it doesn't always work that way and then once they get in there they don't actually really fulfill the things that they were say they were you know mm -hmm. how could you be fighting the establishment while simultaneously endorsing hillary clinton who's pretty much exactly the establishment i mean you know talking about fighting for the people they clearly cut him out of the the um primaries the democrat primaries i mean he was filling up almost as much as what trump was doing at one point trump even said it himself like hey you know you, bernie could have maybe beat me i don't know maybe it would have been uh, maybe i might not have won if, if they would have actually nominated bernie because it looked like the people were behind him i think the average contribution for his campaign was like 17 dollars per person and that yeah so that add that up 17 dollars per person and you raise the most amount of money it shows that the people are behind this candidate. Mm -hmm. So how in the heck could you put Hillary Clinton, who is under investigation from the FBI, uh, just a long you know, slew of scandal and everything behind her, how they obviously had robbed the people right there. And Bernie didn't do anything about that. So it's like, oh, right there, they totally stole the primaries from you. They basically dubbed her. I remember even where here in Arizona, they... Had already people were waiting in line to go vote still, as the news is telling them Hillary Clinton won the Democrat primary. 
Yeah, I mean that's dem that's democracy for you, right? You know, these are all the things mm -hmm. that you know they're they're saying they're gonna they're oh we're here to preserve democracy, we're here to fight for it. Well, that ain't democracy, and you know that, and yeah. it's pretty darn clear they stole it from Bernie and all that. So then I started realizing, wow, these people are not. They just talk a good game. They just talk what they 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 parrot like a bunch of psychopath or uh, sociopaths. They they know what you want to hear, and then they sell it. They go for it, and then they, it's all the things. Oh, I love what he's saying. Yeah, I love what they're saying. I just know it's not doesn't really correspond to reality what they're going to do. So you know, from there it was like, okay, these people are not. They say good things, but they're not actually doing it. And that's when I started to realize that. Like Obama, Obama. I voted for Obama the first time. I thought this guy's going to make some change. You look at how he's talking about reforming this, reforming that, and it was all good information. I was a young, young guy thinking, okay, just give him a chance, just give him a chance. And then he got in there. We got to see what happened. And it's the same thing over. They fail and they fail and they don't deliver. And then they say, oh, just give us another chance. Well, we're onto that. That's a scam. It's just a big scam. And they've mm -hmm. been scamming people. So from there, it's like. I was like, not a fan of Trump. I was like, you know, Trump's probably just another guy. I mean, I didn't really have anything against him, but I was like, he's probably another rich asshole or whatever. You know, I didn't know a whole lot about him. I wasn't following him closely. I didn't have any problem with him. You know, not really, not like a big problem. I was kind of like, I don't know, this guy's kind of like, just what the media had kind of told people, like, Oh, he's racist and he's that. So I was like, ah, you know, that sucks. This guy's, I wasn't looking into it. I wasn't doing my homework, you know? And uh, that was after I went to Standing Rock and I just kind of tuned out. I was like, you know, no, no one's ever going to do anything about anything. So I stopped looking into things, stopped looking into research. And it was Trump that got me back into researching things because I had friends that were telling me about all the good things that he was doing. And I was like, Trump, are you sure? Like, really? And they were like, yeah, like, check him out, man. He's doing all these great things. He's, you know, got all these, you know, great plans that he's been working on, like Operation Lady Justice, you know, hemp, you know, getting a lot of people the uh, right to choose, you know, First Step Act, a lot of just regular things, even for musicians, the Music Modernization Act, you know, things that were good for a lot of people and that he helped, you know, get through. I mean, that could go on and on. But that was because I had to do my research. And every time I found something out, it checked out. It checked out. And what Trump was doing, what he said he was going to do, it checked out. And you just never see that in politics. You never see that. You don't hardly see that in, in the world in general. The people, they, you know, they always they say you're going to do this and then they deliver something else. So, uh, yeah, he started earning my trust, you know, and I was like, uh, Trump's legit. He seems to be legit. Everything uh, somebody would send me, oh, did you hear about this? And I'd be started becoming this Trump expert because I would just like look into everything. And uh, before I knew it, I was like, yeah, the Trump's the truth. I mean, yeah, everybody's we're human beings, so we all gonna have flaws. Of course, you could, you know, if you just judge people on their flaws, and we would never go anywhere. Um, but I realized, yeah, Bernie, I mean, I already knew Hillary Clinton and the establishment was there. But once I saw them all cozied up together, it no longer made sense. And it started to make sense that Trump is this guy who's basically threatening their power over here. And it started to make sense to me that like, oh, OK, definitely at the very least, the enemy of my enemy is my friend or at least somebody I'm, I'd rather support because he seems to be a thorn in their side. He's calling out the fake news. He's calling out all the establishment lies and corruption. If somebody was really in on all that, why would they be, you know, trumpeting it everywhere? You know, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, our journey in faith was leading closer and closer to Jesus. And we just kept getting all these signs that were saying that, like, yeah, there is a war, a spiritual war that's going on in the world. And it's not that necessarily Trump's, you know, he's not some savior. He's not some, uh, you know. Uh, um, someone that was an angel or somebody appointed for God by God, uh, anointed maybe, but um, not somebody who's here to, on like the level of our Savior Jesus. It's not a matter of idolizing him, but here's somebody who's standing his ground as a human being. And to me, it's the story of humanity right there. Our redemption, right? Jesus walked with the disciples of sinners, more or less, because the doctor comes to the sick, not to the healthy. Right. So it would make sense that that man, like all of us, have a chance to repent. Right. To change our minds, to change our ways, to orient ourselves 
even regardless of what we've done and who we were, we have a way to be not defined by our past, but by our path forward to the kingdom of God, to bring about that on earth, which is the highest calling that we can have. And we all agree on that. Anybody even of faith of not, we, I think we all can really find that set in common ground. And it started to become clearer and clearer that this is the path. And everything we saw and everyone we met was right there with you. And so I really love what you're doing with the show, how it's like, yeah, just more and more people that are on this path that see this of what's going on, this battle of what's going on, a spiritual battle and the coming of our of the kingdom. We need to be here. We need to be alert and we need to be participant. When we're asleep or we're just in the world that Satan can control, we're very susceptible. When the world, when we think it's it's time to just have fun, well, there is a time to celebrate. You know, there is a time for these things, but to spend our days and concerned with hedonism and pleasure is essentially what you do when you run your own ship. So as we start to serve a greater purpose and a greater mission, then everything started to become clearer and clearer. And like people like Trump is, is just another person who's doing what God wants him to do at you know his own capacity. Am I saying he's doing everything perfect? No, I mean, I'm not saying I'm doing everything perfect, but that's my journey. It, it was a spiritual one with the politics, with everything all together. It became one journey of finding the truth and, you know, pushing back against these things that are going after our kill our children they're going after our health it's all tied in everything started to make sense and then uh what was the other part of your question to you that... said beginning present and uh and future what do you see how do you see your future oh before that what does god family and country mean to you which you okay yeah. answered everything here good yeah no god means everything and the love for god as we are basically compelled to be with one another is to be with God, right? To love God above all and love each other at second most, like we love ourselves, right? And keeping the most sacred of commandments there. And that is the true guiding light. To me, it's everything now. It comes clear and clear as I get older and as I'm a father, that that's what we need to guide ourselves with. If I compared it to music, it's like there's a, a harmonizing note. It's like the key signature of the song, right? Well, you can't be playing outside that key signature in a, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't be harmonizing with a dissonant chord. So you got to be in accordance with God first, with our, with the source of the creator of our father in heaven, everything that we create and have been created, we have to resonate with that. And we see that there is a way that corresponds with that. There's a way to live with and a way, and a way to not, a way that works and a way that doesn't. The way that works is the way of God. And that and everything, when we start to orient our whole lives around that, glorifying God first, we put that first in first of our focus, even in terms of what we're going to do and get up and get on our phone and get whatever. Well, hold on. Let's be let's be quiet for a second. Let's listen to God and let God speak through us and give us the answer. You know, we pray when we pray, we talk to God when we meditate or we are silent. We listen to God. Right. So that communication allows us to know every day and check in, make sure is this what is this the path? Is this what I'm supposed to be in every step in front of me? Is this right? And and you don't check in like that and you're not reading your scripture or whatever your practice is, then you it's very easy to go off into the weeds. And that's why we need Jesus, right? That's what Jesus came to keep us in alignment with God, our Father. The, the consciousness of all source and creation manifest into a, a form that we can understand to speak to us directly in order to correct our ways. Sin and all these things, I believe, are now there's a we have an open opportunity to talk about these things on a greater conscious level, if you will. And where science and all the and really or belief are not actually in contest with each other, they're actually the same thing. And I studied mathematics, part of my background in um, at college, and music. I studied both of those things, and I found that they're they again in harmony. This is God's law, this is God's world. This is, I mean, you don't do things outside of God's law in terms of physics normally. So why would that wouldn't, that wouldn't work for you there. So why would you do it? Why would you conduct your life philosophically or, you know, ethically not in accordance with God? So that's the beginning. God's right there. Jesus keeps us online. You speak to Jesus. You want to open yourself to Jesus. You will, you will find it. He will come to you. He's a greater consciousness than what we can understand. So when we start to be oriented there, right, that's building on the rock. 
we build on the rock instead of building on the rock, right? I was building on <laughs> like, you know, I was building on uh, what made me feel good, right? And and the music and the, all music comes through God. I don't ever write a good song. It's always God. And I just get to be the vessel in which God allows us to experience this. So knowing that it's not about, oh, will this song get big or will we make money on this? That doesn't matter. You can run the music biz, but that's not the focus, right? We can't serve two masters. We serve God and God provides and God has always provided all the gigs, everything that I've ever gotten just handed right to me. You just ask God and seriously, boom, here's your, here's your bread. Here's your bread for the day. Or is it making you filthy rich right now? No, because that's not going to help you. That's not what's going to keep you on the path. So everything now fits and makes sense because you're building around God rather than building around what you want, what you think you want. So all of it now starts to become one. So that same thing with our country, with our world, right? So if it works for a smaller, it works for a bigger. So once we start orienting ourselves around that, then we can start to build meaningful and long lasting, forever lasting things. Now, if we can do that individually, we can do that communally. We can do that as a country. Then we can do that as a world, right? So we got to change first. We got to, as what Jordan Peterson says, clean our own house, keep our own house in order. Once we got ourselves in order, if everybody changed their own life or if everybody changed their own world, the whole world would change. Literally, by right, by definition. If everybody was like, I'm just going to start eating right. I'm just going to start loving people the way I love and actually do that, you know, the way I love myself. And I, if we just everybody just did that all right, wow. I mean, the world would be obviously just 100% different, right? If we did that, you know, and it's possible. All things are possible through God. So that's where we keep our mind on. That's what we keep ourselves oriented around, right? And when we do that here, we do that there. That's why it's important, you know, that we, this is not in a vacuum. Politics used to be just something you could debate about, but now it's all one. It's all coming in together. And that's where we have these dissonant ideas of people not wanting to harmonize with the wisdom of God and the way of God. And that's where we are all, all are clashing right now. And I think we can all come together. So moving forward, we're, what we're doing now is we're orienting ourselves, we're orienting ourselves around God, around country, family, freedom, all the most important things, right? It's not career, it's not money. When I grew up, it's always like, oh, well, what do you want to be for you grew up? It's like, well, a doctor, because they make a lot of money. Or, you know, a, this person, a movie star, because they make a lot of money. Everybody was like, that's number one. You know, everybody's got it in their mind that you need the money to get here and you don't. And that's the, that's the lie. Those are the lot. That's the, those are the big conspiracies that keep us from the kingdom of heaven. When you, you know, it, you know, when you're touching the kingdom of heaven, you're in the spiritual realm of our father. You're not, you don't even care about money. It's not even something that even, you know, right. So uh, it's not that we're not also flesh. Obviously we're of the flesh here. So we do have to correspond to those things. And that's not a bad thing either. I think, you know, Part of it is that when we glorify God right and we are living right, I think we see this from the history of the Israelites, right? That when you're not living right, you're not going to be rewarded. And it's not going to take you further in, in every kind of way. But when you are, God will reward you big time. And to the point where you're like, I'm not even, I don't care about the glory for me or the reward for me. It's like, it's, being a part of this is just so much greater and better than I even imagined, you know, and that's when we're really doing it. You know, it's like, you know, I guess if you had to look at it like a practical way, it's like Star Trek, like nobody cares about money. It's like just not even an orienting thing. It's like everybody wants something greater. And that's what that's the work of our father. Right. So so what we're doing now is we're building that and we're helping others to get that, too. We've got a lot of people like on our Instagram that are feeling more comfortable in their spirituality more like yeah like more energized with a new life like jesus is getting stronger with us and starting to have a another greater revival right now this is great right this is our kingdom this is our god this is a humble servant not some austere you know whatever thing that people are afraid of some christo fascist takeover they're calling it or whatever some buzzword that they're using um you know it, this is us coming together as humanity so that's what we're doing now even in our own realm you being you and you having that loving faith and that mercy that resonates with us and Jesus Christ allows us to then if in get inside and penetrate other people's fields so that they can start to feel that too. And then it becomes just like music amplified, 
when more frequencies are doing it at once, it becomes amplified. So we're amplifying the frequency and the resonance like a chorus, right? We're all using our voices metaphorically and harmonizing together like a chorus of, of voices. And when you do that, what? It gets louder, it gets stronger, it gets more able to be heard. And then you can start to even like if you were, if you had a whole room of people singing in, in like C major and then somebody comes in and like D flat or, you know, like D sharp or, you know, or something just that's like not hitting right C sharp dissonant. You're going to see who's dissonant and you're going to see what's not really working. And then you're going to see who is. And that's kind of you start to intuitively feel, OK, like you're doing like I feel like, yeah, with your show, like I want to resonate and harmonize with other people who are harmonizing. And then when we do this together, that amplifies the signal. And then more people can start to feel that vibration and be like, oh, I feel the truth now. I see it because there's so much trickery. You know, I can focus on the negative and talk about all what, you know, the dark one does but i i just want to focus on the positive here and what we're doing and that's not what we're doing we don't have to cancel anyone we don't have to you know argue with people even we don't have to convince people we just have to be us and be the vessels for god and that and now i think we're starting to understand tangibly what that means so our music so just writing music for the sake of some song make it and glorify god and inspire and uplift humanity when you're doing it Otherwise, we're just making songs for, I don't know, for what, you know, for no reason, really. Um, and so that's an tangible example about how when we build on rock, we build that it affects other people out in the future. What do we do about, you know, the world? Well, we organize. Then we start to become greater. Once we've got ourselves, our houses in order, then our communities in order, then we can pull, the, you know, the world together in order. But if we try to do the world, we try to, tra you know, change the whole world like that. It's not going to be oriented right. First, we have to build on the foundation. So fundamentally, that's what we're talking about. And that's I hope that answers majority of what you're asking. And if I missed any part of it, let me let, what else? So I think we just covered most of the questions, especially in the future. Now, the only question I do have is where can we find your music? I've seen you on YouTube, I've seen you on Instagram. Do you have any digital media or anything? So I have one completed album as guitars and I have another album I've been working on for a while I just kind of work on it when the inspiration comes to me and I want to really change the orientation of where my music was it was more focused on the negative and stuff like that so I want to change um the vibe of it up a little bit as I move forward in the music industry because I kind of just threw it off to the wayside and was like I don't know what I want to do with with guitars and right now my band had uh my band members had taken different um paths in life and some just things happen you know and it, it the, the pandemic um it kind of threw me off so i had to reevaluate what i wanted to do with it so right now i had i had everything on these platforms but it's like i don't want to support these platforms anymore mm -hmm. so the only place i've been thinking about re-releasing it in terms of uh, the world's distribution is Bandcamp or Bandzoogle. Now, I don't want to have to do either one of those, but they seem to be decent platforms that don't try to meddle in people's lives. Um, but for now, what I'm building is uh, my own click funnels so that people can just get it directly from me. So I'm using Instagram, I'm using you know YouTube, and I'm going to start uh, getting on probably Rumble and and really building. Uh, We're in Rumble too, also. What's that? We're in Rumble. Oh, good. Okay, besides yeah. YouTube, yeah. Besides YouTube, I'm also available in Rumble, Raytheon, BitChute, Gab. Okay, yeah. I'm also on VK.com, but VK.com is, is Russian. But that's because I knew some people when I went to China during the Olympics. I, I I went there with I went there with the going was good. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, there's yeah. good people there, right? It's not so yeah. much people, it's the governments, right, that we're yeah. concerned about. But um I that those are my those are my mediums. But you have your you have your music available. Do you by any chance have any of your music available on um a CDs? Yes, I have physical copies. If somebody wants to DM me, that's how I've been selling them. It's just people DM me their their um their address and then I have a PayPal. 
So people, that's usually how I've been doing it, or I could do uh, Venmo or Zelle or something like that. Um, yeah. If people want to do a direct payment like that, I can send them a CD. I also, Other, I also oh, usually, oh, I sorry. usually also pay by money order as well. I myself could pay money by money order. You just set money orders. I uh, probably, yeah. I don't know. I haven't gotten that yet. I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, I want to make it so that if you want it, you can get it. You know, there'll be a way. I, I'll, 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 because after this interview, I'll probably be DMing you with my uh, physical address, and who knows? I could send you. I could send you money order. If not, you could send me your zone. I also want to tell my colleague that that uh, the American Bistro Girl also accepts Zelle. We have it in our we have it in our email because we cannot I mean, we cannot fight the good fight without Zelle or any other uh, help from other people willing to contribute to music like um, Guitar Zen and also the American Bistro Girl. Awesome, yeah, yeah, no, um, that that's great. Um, I'm trying to get it as, as available for people as possible. <laughs> I'm using uh, these click funnels. I don't know if you've heard of those. Uh, it's just a simple way to get people who sell things more of a direct relationship with the people who want to buy things. So whatever you're buying or selling, I I would like recommend, yeah, looking into click funnel type of yeah. uh, sales. Before or um, I want to also want to thank you. I'm gonna say goodbye to you and then uh, separately after we finish the show. But I do want to thank you for coming to the show, the American Bistro Girl. For me, it's a pleasure and an honor having you. Cool, do, thank you. I do want to do I do want to do some recapping here. Yeah. The first recapping is number one. I am inviting via this interview all Americana artists that believe in God, family, and country. I am trying to invite all of you. We're doing this because we want to promote you and we also want to promote true Americana rock country music. Not this, not the perennial stupidity that is coming from both coasts and from DC. We want the true music. So please, if there are any Americana artists that are listening to me and listening to Guitar Zen, or if Guitar Zen knows anybody, please send them our way. We only accept God, family, and country. Anyone else, forget it, number one. Number two, while I'm not going to be telling anybody who I vote for, I do believe that not just we cannot do everything at the top and expect the bottom to resolve itself. That has been that has been done in some societies and it hasn't worked. You have to work from the bottom up. What do you do from the bottom up? You decide not to give money to corporations that hate you. Because let's be let's let's I'm gonna be I'm gonna be frank about this. Most of the corporations that are around us, and I'm not, I'm, I know I'm gonna probably get canned on this, but I could care less. I have my cancellation button ahead of times, just in case. But the corporations hate us. Hollywood hates us. New York hates us. And we do not need to give money to people who hate us. What do we do? We give money to corporations or small companies or small businesses that love us. We also, and also love God, family, and country. We also buy products made in America, like the All American Clothing Company. I'm also commending you and, and your wife on the, on your promotion of American made products. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Which I'm also recommending too. But please talk with Guitar Zen and, uh, and his wife. Yeah. I can only speak from my point. Buy All American Clothing Company. Listen to the artists that actually love America, like Guitar Zen, like Abby London, like Cassia Dunn, Amber A. Dunn, Cynthia Rausch, and one of my biggest favorites here in Florida, and that I recommend to you too, Midnight Kahuna. These are the real, these are the really great people who deserve who deserve an audience because of their love of God family, and country. And also, if you could buy soaps, the soaps that I'm using, I'm using a right-wing soap, dissident soap, a Bearsville soap, and outlaw soap. Outlaw soap, I think, is made in Nevada. Uh, dissident soap, along with the lotions and everything, for the, for the hair, but let's get it straight, is made in Montana. Bearsville soap, okay, it's made in New York, but it's in northern New York, but they have offices in South Dakota. 
So that's a that's a plus. So let me say, right wing soap is made in Indiana. So please use all of their products. You won't regret it. There's some. There are also some other companies like Hero Soap, uh, Frontier Coffee Company, which is the uh, coffee company. I've, I've discovered them through Instagram. Please use those products as well. Also, if you love Goya, if you're into Latin food or fruits or anything like myself, Goya. They're not not only do they love God, family, and country, but they've been an institution for the last 100 years, and they have great they have great foods. That's all I'm going to say. And we have to build everything from the bottom up. And please turn off the naysayers. Do not pay attention to those who are really doing who are really doing us the damage. Unlike many, unlike many people in America, I did not pass through the leftist face because the leftist face crucified most of my family and turned others into zombies in Spain and Cuba. But that's another issue. I do will I will say that I have I have been, I'm not gonna say a right wing or left wing because right wing and left wing were invented by the left wingers to justify repressing anybody else that doesn't agree with them. Right. I was more like a free spirit libertarian. Unfortunately, the Libertarian Party here in America, with minor exceptions, has not fulfilled my expectations. So um, I'm not gonna delve into that because it's become sort of like the three stooges. But um, I know I'm a believer in God, family, and country. I did convert to God. I was once a Catholic, but unfortunately, I've been seeing that the I've been seeing the, um, someone trying to become Pope who isn't a Pope and has destroyed the Catholic uh, the Catholic Church with, from within. I did the American way and did my own. Well, I didn't do my own baptism. I had someone from Alabama who was a friend of mine and. Um, his wife was the pastor's wife. We did the baptism with my wife being the um, the witness. We did an all-American baptism in Lake Wakiva in Orlando, Florida. Oh, yeah. And I wasn't the only one. Everybody, everybody that wanted to participate participated in baptisms with their pastors. This was independent of any churches. Even in my own church that I went to, I just talked with this pastor friend of mine, and we did it. I went in the jeans, T-shirt, the whole bit. And came out saved. That's all I'm gonna say. Do go not just it's not just electing the top people when you have to build everything from the bottom up. I, I agree. You have to build everything from the bottom up. Everything, the structure, the uh food, the uh soaps, the clothing, the whole bit. We can't invent the cars, nor can we invent the uh the gasoline, although we could try, but we, everything has to be done from the bottom up. We can no longer rely on people who want to actually strangulate us and force us to have insects and all the other stupidity. We right. don't need that. We need to start being self-reliant. And America is a great country. Why is it a great country? Not because of the politicians. Is because of people who are being self who are self reliant and can be self reliant if they want to, and we're going to be doing our part. And if you can also change banks, insurance companies, go ahead and do it. Find insurance companies and banks that love America. I recommend one, Old Glory Bank. Yeah. The insurance company. I'm still trying. I'm, I'm still trying to find an insurance company, but there are about about one or two that are also in the. Um, that I love God, family, and country. I'm trying to find them in Instagram, and when I do, I'll be sending you the. the yeah, let me let me know. Yeah, yeah. But please, let go to Guitar Zen and check his out. Check him out, the CDs and everything. For my part, he already told about what he, what he's accepts, including Zell. We here accept Zell for the American Bistro Girl because we do need it. We're also going to accept the donations as well, uh, money order. But mostly sell, and um, any other artists that want to come in, please do so. We need to promote God, family, and country. We are at a crossroads. We cannot allow our country to be lost. We cannot allow it. Remember the lessons of Western Europe, especially France. 
without without much, is Roberto Alvarez Gallo and also thanking Guitar Zen. Peace in, peace out, and peace Amen. everywhere. And may God bless all of you. And may God bless America. Amen.